So the main event was awesome. It was uh, Drew McIntyre, Riddle, and AJ Styles' 27-minute television match here. And obviously they had a bunch of commercials, but you saw a good portion of the match. And the story was, it's three guys, and as usually is the case in triple thread matches, get rid of a guy for a while, two guys work, etc. So first, Riddle and Styles grab McIntyre, and they slam him through the announce table. So he is out of action for a while. They do some great stuff in the ring, and then finally Styles hits a uh, torture rack into a Death Valley driver. He goes for the cover, McIntyre returns, and he pulls AJ out of the ring. So then Riddle's outside, and he's kicking everybody, and he finally goes for this big kick, but he misses, and he kicks the steel steps. And he goes down, he's screaming, he says his leg is broken, his foot is broken. They call out all of the... uh, officials to help him limp to the back so he's gone and then we have McIntyre and Styles going back and forth for a while and so finally out comes Riddle again he's got his foot all taped up and he limps down to the ring and they do a couple of near falls back and forth and finally Riddle hits the RKO on Styles almost pulls Styles out of the ring Riddle turns around he gets hit with the Claymore and so McIntyre gets the final Money in the Bank qualifying spot, or he gets the final spot in the match, and uh, that's how the show ended. Yeah, Yeah. There's still still a couple more spots left. By the way, what's going on with this SmackDown thing, Dave? Which SmackDown thing? Well, how in the world... Okay, so first off, why isn't Liv Morgan in this match yet? Um, When I watched the show, they made it clear that she could be in the match... But it's not official, so like they have to make that ruling on next week's show. I guess is the way. Well, whoever it is on WWE.com that wrote the show report, that person believed that by winning she qualified because that's what he wrote in the report. Well, it was certainly implied when I watched the show, but then after the match was over, the way the wording was by the announcers was she very well could have earned her not earned her spot, but. She has to be considered for a spot now, is, is the way they said it. I mean, like, but from a logic standpoint, if they don't announce her for a spot next week and Carmella has a spot next week, it makes, there's no way that that makes any sense in the world. Because the thing that I got out of it, you know, from watch, when I did watch SmackDown, was that, you know, between everything, we talked about this the other day, the announcement of Carmella getting a spot without qualifying for no other reason other than she's the most beautiful woman in WWE it's just, I mean, I guess we just have to accept it as wrestling that makes no sense, or WWE that makes no sense, because, my God, like, Drew McIntyre has to qualify, you know what I mean? AJ yeah. Styles has to qualify. Um, yep, Riddle. You know, Riddle, I mean, well, you know, all these guys have to qualify, and she doesn't, coming off of a loss, I mean, that's the other thing, if she had, like, won, like, all these matches in a row and was the number one contender for the championship already, um, even then she should have because everyone else had to, but coming off of a loss, it's like, if nothing else, like when they should have had like a reason other than the first, you know, like they had no reason. She just announces that she's in and then Liv goes in there to challenge. Liv beats her. So yeah, I, I mean, I presume Liv will be announced next week. Um, I watching the match when Liv won, it was like, okay, she's in. And then the announcers go, she very well could have earned her spot with that win, you know, without saying that like it's official. You know, and then so. the other thing, the other thing is if you if you take out Tamina and Natty, there's only four women on the SmackDown roster. So I don't even know why they should even be competing for a spot. It's not like on Raw where you got 85 men and you got to choose the four guys for the deal. There's only four singles women on SmackDown. Okay. Well, then maybe they're all going to get in. I don't know. Maybe Tamina and Natty will be in there as well. Maybe maybe those are the two. There's two women that are going to be the odd well, women don't, out. Well, don't don't you think Tamina and Natty are wrestling Mandy Rose and Dana Brooke on that? You would think so. I mean, watching the TV, that's the direction. I mean, granted, you could put one match on on television and, and a different match on the pay per view. So who are the other two? The other two women on SmackDown that that would be in there besides um, Carmella and Liv. I would have to find the list I had right here, but I mean Sasha's gone, so unless they bring her back, well, they could ha- they could have her. Um, Bailey's going to be wrestling um, um, B- Bianca Belair. It appears since she pinned her in a tag match, so it would make sense. But of course, assuming that what would make sense in WWE booking is is one step further than you ever should really go. 
Hey, if you're a big fan of Wrestling Observer Radio, we got 12,000 episodes of all of our podcasts up at our website, WrestlingObserver.com. If you sign up today, you get access to every single one of them. The 12 to 18 new shows that we do every single week. You can podcast them, listen to them on the road, at work, working out, in the shower, wherever you listen to your podcasts. And also full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter and archives. So if you love what you hear, head to WrestlingObserver.com. 12,000 audio shows at your fingertips.